Hey guys, this week on Awesome Cast, Norm Hulesman joins us as we talk about cutting the cord, creepy psychotherapy, replacements with the Kinect, and so much more. Awesome Cast. It's the Awesome Cast 143 coming at you live from the studios down here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I'm Mike Sorg, the host of this chicanery, uh, ready to rock it here. Joining me, the only person joining me, because some people are prima donnas and have to get their haircuts around when the podcasts are. Hmm. We got Norm Hulesman from iTwixie.com at Mr. Derby on the Twitter. How you doing this week, Norm? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me back on. How are things going over there at a, at a iTwixie? I put on your tag, you are keeping uh, our kids safe. I am, uh, every day. And uh, things are awesome, actually. We just, uh, well, not just, but we recently relaunched the whole site uh, since the last time I was on. So everything is brand new uh, from the CMS to the front end. And um, we actually just launched a lot of stuff today. We have a lot of monthly themes, and this month the month of april is uh april in wonderland so we uh have a lot of new fun stuff going on there it is uh i should have given you a login so you could you know actually get in there and see it (laughs) but um yeah it's uh we you know we launched some new role plays we have this new thing that's very dungeons and dragons like Uh, that's a online role play and we have a character named april uh conveniently enough and uh she is going to be uh, leading uh, a story through throughout the month of how uh, she is a, has a new job as a dog walker walking the Twixie dog, and she'll be talking about those adventures in, in a role play format. So it's something new for us, but we're excited about it. And um, yeah, it's it's actually kind of exciting for me and for you know our team because everything's new and we're really able to do a lot more with the site than we could before mm-hmm. uh, in the old content management system. So. Awesome. So check it out. And if you have kids, uh, daughters, ages 8 to 14, it's the best site on the Internet for them. And, and, so. and, and that's definitely a discussion I'm having a bit more and more is a lot of people just kind of being like a lot of parents being kind of scared of the Internet. I mean, this is something a, a discussion we should have a little like maybe a special edition or something like that. But but are you guys I mean, you guys are kind of creating a safe harbor for for kids to be on the Internet, too. Right. Absolutely. So. I mean, that's the mission of the site is to be 100 percent safe and moderated um for kids and we've got tons of fun content but Mm -hmm. there's never going to be anything that's inappropriate or gross or um too mature you know nothing gets posted on there that doesn't get looked at by an itwixi administrator so there's never that's how we keep it so safe and um yeah i talk to parents all the time too who i mean their kids or you know their daughters are getting to be the age where they're online and their friends are online and you know you want to let them be online and you want to help teach them how to be responsible when it comes to the internet. And I took is a great way to do it because, um, you know, it's not Facebook where anything and everything can happen where you have, um, there were nothing's moderated and it's basically literally the wild, wild west in the sense of, uh, so kids socializing and bullying and, you know, learning how to be teenagers and, and kind of getting themselves into trouble and, you know, creating maybe, scenarios that they didn't mean to get into when when it comes to facebook and social interaction so you know i took takes care of you know that and all, mo- you know most of our members are really proactive about having a site that's really safe and great so um yeah so i, I mean i could probably talk about that for an hour <laughs> you know <laughs> that's but we, have, we have lots of conversations about it you know with our team and um and it's a really yeah it's a really important topic and um you know, I, I run into lots of people when I tell them what I do, they're like, Oh, I'm going to tell my, you know, my brother about that, or Mm -hmm. I'm going to definitely check that out for my kid. So, um, so yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I get a lot of uh, talk about, you know, people afraid of like, you know, the, what the kids are playing and who they're talking to on Xbox and everything. It gets pretty crazy. So, so yeah, definitely, definitely. So, well, Hey, Josh, he's not here. Like I said, he's a, uh, he's uh, on his way back uh, as, as we speak from what I'm, I'm understanding. So he'll uh, hopefully join us here uh, throughout the broadcast here. Of course we are here live 
every Tuesday at live.sorgatronmedia.com or at awesomecast.com. You can check out all the past episodes and contact info for this and other shows over at sorgatronmedia.com. Um, and, and you can join us here, like I said, live.sorgatronmedia.com where we got a chat room rolling. We got a couple guys popping in. It's early in the broadcast day here at Sorgatron Mania. M- M- Mania? Hey, uh, we should do something about that, right? Uh, it's the weekend for it. Uh, but we got Bobby FJ Town and Alex from over there in the Long Beach representing as well. And WrestleFan, I know, is popping in and out there from uh, Texas. So uh, great to have you guys join us and keep us going. Um, wow, he's joining us from his uh, iPad. I, I didn't know those awesome. work. I, I, the, the, we always have such problems with the iPad with Justin TV, so it's good to see that they're hopefully smoothing those over a little bit then. Um, excellent. So let's get right into it with our awesome thing of the week. Norm, I, I think I kind of sprung on you. You want to go first? You want, you want a couple minutes there? Well, I I don't know that I'm going to come up with about another one, but the awesome thing that happened this week was Game of Thrones launch. Game of Thrones? Uh, on uh, Sunday night. It was the first episode of Season 3. You know, uh, I, I heard uh, right before we got on that it was the Game of Thrones is the one of like the number one most pirated shows of all time um, from BitTorrent or what you know whoever keeps track of that, mm-hmm. and uh, that would be uh, you know my my uh, awesome thing of the week. And you told me not to not to give you any spoilers, but uh, no spoilers. I'm about five six episodes into it. So, like the original, <laughs> so, the first season. Yeah. Well, you you know you'll get caught up real real fast. I mean, yeah. There aren't yeah. too many episodes in terms of you know seasons go. Yeah. But uh, yeah, one of the just the best well done shows. You know, sometimes there's just like gratuitous nudity for no reason other than it's HBO. And We've noticed gotta, that. We've noticed that. I know. I know. I listen to some other podcasts where uh, they've been talking about it ever since it came out, and they're like, I don't remember this much nudity in the book. You know, uh, so and, and even just watching it with Missy is just like, uh, wow, we're just naked because right now, aren't we? So, mm-hmm. uh, so I mean, yeah, it's HBO, right? So, so exactly. otherwise, though, well written, well produced, uh, you know, good, good stuff, good stuff, and, and it unfolds. That's why it's so good because like the story is just constantly unfolding and getting more and more serious and dangerous. And I have, I, have, I, I honestly have a problem like following everything. Like, like uh, I, I imagine it gets better as I go along and I start kind of getting more familiar with the characters, right? Because, mm-hmm. like, like, the first, like, two episodes, everybody just kind of really blended together for me. You know, I'm just like, uh, the only reason I'm picking up on the Starks is because it's the guy from Lord of the Rings and we keep thinking it's, like, Iron Man. Um, <laughs> which is kind of appropriate considering that one scene uh, with the other people, the dragon people. Uh, anyways, uh, so plus we like watched the first episode, didn't get into it, came back like six months later. So we're trying to remember what happened in the first episode. So, oh yeah, so yeah, well, so so yeah, most pirated. Like, uh, and I think uh, even ratings wise, it beat out. Um, oh, what did it say? It beat out Heroes. I think it said. Uh, for like a, a season premiere of uh, of of heroes, uh, but yeah, most pirated and and depending on who you ask, uh, uh, involving the show and HBO themselves, it, it sounds like they're not too worried about that piracy. You know, I, this is like I've had this conversation over and over and over again because of the way you know cable currently set up and the internet and, and netflix and access to you know entertainment content i you know i don't know that it is going to hurt hurt them it's only it only could help um if hbo could get out of the this weird contract situation they have with the networks and just let people pay for the season and watch it live like i pay you know 20 or 30 bucks for the season if i could watch it live streaming you know i don't need a cable package to watch it. And that's a show that I'd want to pay for. For sure. But it's so hard. You know, you probably, you have to, I saw a really good cartoon one time where the guy, there was a guy who was like, oh, well, let me go buy the Game of Thrones season. That so was the, watch uh, it. was it the oatmeal one? Yeah. And, and he couldn't get it or it was impossible to get. So he ended up just stream using BitTorrent anyways, because he couldn't get it. He couldn't pay for it when he was wanted to pay for it. Yeah. I think it was the oatmeal. <laughs> so uh, maybe I'll bring that up. You can put that in the notes. <laughs> Uh, but no, it, it, well, there, there's a few things going on actually with that. We'll we'll, we'll find some nor- the, some related news stories here before we get to my thing. Uh, but yeah, HBO Go, like, there's some some rumors going around that they may be uh, looking into actually bundling themselves with, like, if you have Verizon or something. It, 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 so you're not required to necessarily have the cable subscription, but I may be able to subscribe to it because I have FiOS, I guess. 
Um, like, so they're not going to be completely on their own, but they still, for core cutters like me, it sounds like they're, they might be providing a, a, something of an option for that. Well, I know with HBO Go, you can get the content, but you have to have a cable subscription. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So I don't know. I haven't heard about it. You know, and this is one of the few shows that I would want to watch. I mean, everything else I can get pretty much, you mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. the week after or the day after. But um, the movies aren't too like like I go on there and it's like, well, there's Matrix, you know. I, I, OK, yeah, I have Matrix on DVD. It's nice to watch it in HD or they have Back to the Future. And it's always the same movies over and over again. Like I, I think the movie selection, while they're kind of better movies, typically kind of pale in comparison to the variety I get over on Netflix. But it is stuff like Oz, you know, I'd love to just like run through that entire thing, you know, stuff like Entourage, like other, uh, Boardwalk Empire, I always see Chachi talking about. Uh, so it's great to kind of have that access to be like, you know, much like Netflix where I'm like, just, just trucking through old, old se- seasons, like, like, like West Wing and stuff. I, it'd be great to do that with just HBO stuff. And if this is the only way to get it, that that's fine for me. I'll pay for it. You know, it's better than buying DVDs. Right. Right. Or you just have to have a friend who's willing to let you have access to their HBO Go account. So. Or your local library. Something weird. It was, um, um, oh, what's her, uh, Lisa Kudrow uh, was being interviewed on Smodcast, and they talked about uh, a, a, a show that lasted like one season. It's not on HBO Go, but they do have it at the library. Hmm. And they also have a web therapist that's her uh, Showtime show at the library and DVD. Uh, here in the uh, fantastic library system we have here in Pittsburgh, they have freaking everything. Okay, I know that my buddy watched all about the new Battlestar Galactica through the library. So, exactly, it's um, great. Uh, I, I put, I mean, you know, new stuff's going to be a while before it gets through there. But it seems like every time I request something, it seems like they get it at my local library, and they're not like shipping it in like all the graphic novels that I end up getting. Hmm. Uh, but the, the audio books. So the only thing about audio books is like they have everything, but they're on CDs. So that gets a little weird, but you know what you can do with CDs, right? Uh, won't go any further. Um, well, but, if I have a new MacBook Pro, I, I don't know what I can do with it. <laughs> like, where does this go? I, I could I, use it as a coaster. <laughs> exactly, and then return it three weeks later, right? It'd be cheaper. It'd be cheaper to buy what, but to, to buy the thing digitally because otherwise, I'm spending that money in gas, driving around in circles, listening to the book. In my <laughs> You don't even have a CD player in your – you know, I also probably don't have a CD player in my house. I'm just thinking about like anywhere where we listen to music, our iPad, iPod docks at this point or computers. Yeah. We still have a couple computers with drives in them. Uh, maybe, well, look, we, I, well, I have a little stack of them with uh, drives in them. Uh, but, but like, you know, Missy still has a laptop that has – you know, that's a PC, so it's going to have it. Um, the drives went on my old MacBook, so – I need an external anyways, just to do my authoring. So, yeah. you know, my, my current piece or my current MacBook does still have the CD drive, but, um, I know that my next machine won't, I, I never use it. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um, Hey, one more thing on HBO go while we're touching on this, uh, this is an interesting story that came up. I think today I can't find a date on it. Where is it? Uh, this one's over on the verge, uh, is where I'm pulling this story. Uh, but, uh, president of HBO sports says HBO go will live stream, uh, events by the end of this year. Now I'm not real big in like the boxing or anything that HBO puts on, but still that's, that's still kind of a dedication to, Hey, we're really all in for this. HBO Go uh, uh, aspect. Yeah, I think it's great, uh, and ho- you know, hopefully HBO can do something along the lines that can be a, a leader in for other networks because mm-hmm. you know they obviously are producing great content. They want it, people want to get to their content, and they're going to make that accessible. At some point, something's going to change. There's going to be huge money for them as people are cutting cable, they're cutting HBO, and HBO is going to have to do something to deliver that content. So whether it's their sports or their their other shows or their movies, you know, they're going to need to get it to the people and, you know, they're going to go where the dollar is. So mm-hmm. hopefully it's, mm-hmm. you know, a- and really at this point, they're a destination. So it's like, Hey, give me, uh, you know, you know, grease the rails that, that, that give me, give you my money. You know what I mean? Uh, at this point, it, that's, that's basically or just make, make an option for you to subscribe just to HBO go and mm-hmm. you can get it on, you know, mm-hmm. your one or two devices in your home. And, uh, and that, that'll be good. I think, I mean, I've talked to so many people who have said, just, yeah, I would pay for the content I want and get rid of all this other crap that I don't need. I don't need 100 TV stations or TV channels. I just want to watch 10, you know. Exactly. But let me pick and choose those, and, you know, I, I'd be happier. So, um, 
so hopefully that's hopefully they that, that's all I have to say about that. But uh, hopefully they can they can do something. <laughs> and we'll talk about a little bit of something later that I've been wanting to throw my money at for a couple of years. I just got up got an update that I've been waiting for. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, my my this is almost my first awesome thing of the week until I heard this other news today. Uh, but you know, I, I was just looking through my news, um, and, and I love when I'm looking through like my own tech news and find something that relates to a client of mine. Uh, so so I pass this along to them. Uh, and, and this kind of goes along with the robots are taking over uh, that Chachi's are real big on. Uh, so, and I love any hack to the Kinect, okay? Uh, the Kinect powered SimSensi can diagnose depression by tracking movement, body movements and facial expressions. So what happens, and I'll bring up the video here as well. Uh, so basically you have like a digital therapist here, right? In this video, get playing. Do, do, do. And, and she's going to talk to you. Here we can see what she's saying here. Los Angeles. Oh, I'm from LA myself. You guys can hear that? When was the last time you felt really happy? Uh, when was the last time? Now, for you on audio, what's going on here is you have like kind of a digital avatar thing on the right, uh, that's like the the Sim Sensei that that's 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 talking to you, right? And then on the left is uh, a guy that's responding, um, uh, being picked up by a Connect, you know, the Xbox Connect. I imagine this is getting plugged into a computer with all this stuff going on, and they have like a a a facial uh, recognition framework going on so it's seeing where his eyes are it's seeing where his mouth is it sees which way he's looking uh there's actually a framework here towards the bottom of how he's sitting um there's a voice track there that, that's checking out on the left there's actually like levels of body activity of gaze attention you'll see there's a bunch of meters here you probably can't see on the video but it tells, tells you a vertical gaze horizontal gaze smile level uh speaking uh speaking i think it says fractured leaning forward leaning backwards and these are all like if you were like a psychiatrist these are all kind of cues that you know it says right here like it notices the subject is leaning backwards so maybe they're more relaxed or or, or, or whatever that cues and depending on what it sees if it's a if it's a tendency to mean hey you're not really being honest with what you're talking about it'll go and restate the question or try to draw more out of them um, or if it, it just sees a pretty confident response, it'll move on to the next question. Um, so I guess, yes, it's creepy as hell, Alex. Um, but, but this, this whole idea, and they say right at the beginning, it was like, this is not a therapist, you know, but from what I'm seeing and, you know, not that I've taken therapy myself and, you know, we don't have to just, I don't know who has, uh, but, um, but this is a really cool, uh, a tool, I think, um, but yeah, yeah. Well, I I probably be depressed if I was getting therapy from a weird <laughs> computer generated person. But this is the kind of thing where, and I don't know enti- exactly what the what the use like. Where does this fit into the whole, uh, you know, mode mode modality? You know, uh, uh, for, for for a psychiatrist or something like that. Um, but it's. Uh, well, here it goes into uh, the, the the creator tested it by interviewing sixty people, half of whom had already been diagnosed with severe depression. And that's the whole idea is to to s- detect is there a case for depression, right? Yeah. Uh, so so this could be like instead of your you know consultation, you sit down with this and you get a report in and say, okay, this is where we need to start from, right? Um, if it works really good, you know. Um, but uh, the system's highly successful in its assessments. The machine accurately diagnosed 90% of those people with whom it talked, uh, in quotes, talked. Uh, while the physical signs that SimSensei tracks may seem obvious, diagnosing depression remains one of the more difficult challenges facing medical professionals. Uh, so any system that can, can help uh, conform such suspicions could be a valuable tool, says uh, The Verge. So... Um, but yeah, the, the idea, and, and say there, there's science for it. There, there's a, a lot of kind of technique to this. And again, you know, stuff that can be missed when, you know, you're just a person talking to somebody, but a lot of cues. Um, so I, pretty cool. They, they've kind of automated this. So. You know, I was at, uh, the Pittsburgh TEDx recently <clears throat> and there was a woman there talking about depression and how she was studying like the positive, like how they could, um, Two. learn about depression by Hi. studying like positive feelings too like because depression is basically the absence of 
um, happy feelings. So mm-hmm. understanding what makes you happy helps them also know what makes you, you know, why is someone unhappy. So, you know, this is kind of interesting and, um, you know, you could get therapy without leaving your home it is, is really kind of novel. Mm-hmm. Or at least diagnosed, or at least, you know, without putting yourself out there, you know. Um, I don't know about, I, yeah, I, I don't know about the leaving your own home because, I mean, this is like ideally probably a connect hooked up to a computer. So if you're, well, you know. Oh, so you might be in like a lab somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, well, I, I, I feel like they're doing this, but I'm not, I'm not sure, like, yeah, these, these Xboxes took our gerbs. Yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, that's what they were thinking when I sent it to the few therapists that I work for, huh? Um, <laughs> but, but no, I think it's a pretty cool thing. I, and I love anything with Connect. You know, I sat there, I sat there for like five minutes with, uh, 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 Josh Sager, you know, we know has uh, uh, is involved with uh, PTI, uh, Pittsburgh Technical Institute, and they're doing a lot of cool stuff with connects. They set up actually in the hallways, and I'm playing like Pong with my one arm with myself because I have nobody else to play with. Um, but uh, but no, and they have some other cool like 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 where you speak to it. They have a big touch screen set up too, so they're they're throwing all kinds of experiments at that system to see what's going on. So for sure, um, excellent. So. Let's get back around to television there, Norm, and uh, okay. other cool cord cutting esque things. So I, I don't think you've, you haven't been on the show when we've talked about Aereo, I take it, right? No. Okay. Now, and now Aereo, for those that don't know, uh, it's A E R E O. I feel like I'm just doing the. Are know. they paying you right now? No, no, they're not paying me right now, but I may be paying them because this is kind of a cool service. So basically, and they are coming soon here to the Pittsburgh area and in uh, about 21 other cities. They're already in, in New York. That's where the trouble started. Uh, but what the service is, uh, for those that maybe haven't checked it out or, or listened to the show. Um, so it's basically, it's over-the-air uh, TV, right? You know, what I would get if I put rabbit ears up these days, right, in, in the area. Um, but, of course, you know, a lot of times, and the whole idea was, you know, in New York City, you can't always just put rabbit ears up, you know, depending on your your apartment's facing the wrong way. You know, there's another big building in your way. You know, there's, there's lots of problems with that, right? There's no, like, line of sight. Uh, you know, the place is just too big, too much stuff, right? So the idea was then you're stuck with cable. These guys, instead of you putting up rabbit ears or dealing with cable, it... What you're doing when you pay these guys, uh, I believe it's eight to twelve dollars a month to start. Um, I'll throw up, throw up the plan so we can get some pricing. Um, so what you're doing is you're renting an antenna that they have set up as an array. You know, optimal. It's going to get all stations, no ifs, ands, or buts, right? Uh, so you're renting that, and then it broadcasts to you and over the internet. And this thing works. I believe they have an app on the Roku box, on your iDevices, on your Android devices. Um, and so you get all that TV. Plus, a, you have a live pause and rewind. You have a DVR in the cloud. So it will record programs for you. So if you, if you just watch stuff that's over the air, you can start doing this instead of dealing with Hulu Plus at that point. Um, but yeah, coming to the Pittsburgh area. Now, they did they did just have... The big news this week, uh, they won a major court battle uh, against the TV networks that were pretty much uh, trying to say that they were um, uh, unable to rebroadcast their stuff, right? Uh, But they came down with a a position that said, uh, you know, uh, there's no difference between what Aereo's doing, taking that signal from one antenna that you own rent however you look at it taking it over the internet and, and and between taking like an antenna signal and distributing it amongst your own house yeah basically it's just i read this they you know they uh own, or, or, or there's no difference between yeah if you have an antenna in your own what you just said in your house and then they, but the they're the way they got around it is they're not they're not controlling the content they're renting you an antenna and mm-hmm. then you are just using that antenna the t- antenna just happens to be coming through uh, internet transfer and it may the antenna may be located across town that's kind of the the logic of it so mm-hmm. um yeah, yeah it looks looks interesting except you know it's just over the air yeah. so it's kind of it, it, it's it's cool and interesting but at the same time is it worth 80 dollars a year i think it's worth it if you don't get 
over the air very easily. Like I know here, I have an issue getting a few of the stations. Uh, Channel four, I have a, I usually don't get. Um, you know, some of the other ones like kind of come and go, uh, depending. Uh, you know, if you but in, and to have the DVR functionality on top of that. I think it's pretty the DVR cool. is is worth probably paying for if you, yeah. if you want it because you can get any sports game. You can DVR your you know your Steeler game or exactly. whatever or, or hockey game. Exactly. And uh, you know, and I will say this: we cut the cord for cable uh, in February here at my house, mm-hmm. and we've been going through multiple alternatives to getting you know sports basically. And we did over the air this weekend, and we had it in the living room, which is on the first floor. And anytime a car w- drove by <laughs> or somebody walked, literally walked by our house, it would skip the the speed. Mm-hmm. And um, so we ended up moving, like we re- rewired our whole house to get put the antenna on the second floor, which works, but you know it was a lot of work. But yeah, but and, again, like that versus you know, do I have something internet enabled that I can just throw a Roku box on, and 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 I get the same thing. You know, I, I think you're you're the perfect kind of person that that may benefit from this because of where you live. You know, you live in the city. There's no reason you have a right to the over the air broadcast. And the and the uh, the alternative is going to Verizon, FiOS, or Comcast and saying, you know, paying for their minimal package, which I think starts at about fifteen to twenty bucks. You know, and then you know, and get a DVR, which is another ten to fifteen bucks for that rental and service fees. For the box now, you have to get uh, versus you know what the, what they offer here. The prices kind of make sense for it, you know. If that's yeah, all the price you want. is definitely better for sure. Yeah. So, um, and this is of course open them up to potentially having partnerships uh, with guys like Directv. I think I've seen uh, some place where AT and T has been brought up as talking with these guys. Uh, so you know, it looks like they're only going to get bigger at this point. Uh, you know, I, I don't think this, they're going to do much uh, other than over the air because they they can't because uh, when you get into something. Excuse me, like a direct TV cable system. Now you have carriage problems, right? Although it could be, it could be an interesting workaround for uh, if you don't have a sling box. If they apply some of that technology there, who knows? Um, well, but, I've got another. I've got so I've got another. Can't cut the cable theory for okay. you. I'll just carry because I don't know if you and I've had this conversation yet. But I think the if if Facebook was really trying to be progressive, <laughs> they would get in bed with Netflix or Hulu or major content provider and deliver all of you, like try to turn Facebook into the new like TV delivery system because tune in to Facebook at 7 p.m. to watch your favorite show or, you know, whatever sports broadcast. Uh, that way you're already, you know, in your fit in the Facebook environment, you can already communicate and chat with your friends while you're watching the, the show and and it's all right there and you never ever have to log out of facebook and facebook's on your tv facebook's on your you know, all of your devices and uh that would be i think the future of facebook if they could if they could do that take that step somehow um they would be leaps and bounds ahead of of google and um almost almost every uh yeah, content delivery uh cable network because everybody's already on facebook and mm-hmm. I think that's the future of TV anyways, is this social component where, I mean, you are, there are, people are already kind of doing it with tablet devices, but when TV technology finally gets there where you're able to interact with your TV like you are with your computer or your tablet, it's going to be, you know, that's, that's the future of, of TV media, I think. So I don't know if you have thoughts on that or if you guys have, have had well, conversations about that in the past, but that's my big hypothesis about what Facebook should do. Not about really. Facebook in particular, but but if you think about it, aren't they the company that's big enough to not give an F about uh, you know, the big industry and upsetting them with something disruptive like that? You know, you know, much like we had uh, Apple do the same thing with the music industry, where like we need somebody that doesn't care as much, right? And says we're going to do it this way, and we're going to come to these content providers and do this, that, and the other. Yeah, thing. it's going to be better, and all they need to do is get like maybe buy Hulu. Or buy Netflix. I mean, <laughs> I know that that's for sale. easier to say, but uh, you know, do something crazy like that, and everyone will go, "What the heck are they doing?" You know, but it would make a lot of sense to me. You know, start delivering just video content, and I don't know. You know, I don't know how great YouTube's, or I'm sorry, Facebook's current video offering is. I mean, it integrates with everything else pretty well. But mm-hmm. if they could start offering streaming and handle that bandwidth. 
like, why not? You know, you just have the TV button right next to your, you know, friends link and you can watch any show. It, it will be easier than, you know, or, and why not? Why not bring in movies? Why not bring in, you know, on demand content? It seems perfect for them. Exactly. So, oh, oh the cast me yelling at me. So, um, so April Fools was yesterday. Did you survive? Played on me. Did, who really? Like I heard somebody say. I think somebody said that they had like seventy five newspapers up to their stoop or something like that. I'm like, who? I didn't. I didn't know people actively play pranks. <laughs> I thought they just like you know sites do funny stuff on the internet, you know, and that that's about it, right? Um, there was a couple. I I'm not sure if I got duped by one of them or not uh, because is the Doctor Who thing really happening? Uh, the the reunion thing is anybody anybody help me out there? Because I realized I tweeted that and I started thinking about like later in the day. I'm like, oh, this is probably not real, is it? I don't one time uh, when I was still doing my magic blog, the uh, the wizards published the fake release of something and i've totally fell for it i wrote a review and everything and people called me out on it and i just had egg all over my face but that was the last (laughs) (laughs) that was the last time oh wait never mind never mind because i just found the story from like february 15th so okay we're good we're good um so doctor who i don't feel so bad about the confirmed tenant and rose are back okay uh well it looks like google was the only like the major uh the major April Fool proprietor. They uh, usually are, though. They have yeah. like four different things. <laughs> My favorite was the, when they Rickrolled the world on with YouTube back in the day. That was probably my longtime favorite. But so, so the, the one of the fun ones they did was um, the Google Knows project. <laughs> which, so you know, it's what you think. Like it'll, it'll, you, well, it, it, you look up a scent and it'll actually like. The computer or the laptop or whatever or a tablet uh i don't know it's just like i don't know it's just like shots of people so far and uh I, and the, the, how much they put into these videos for these fake projects at google google i love everybody like the big backlash this year was like stop doing these april fool's jokes google and maybe you could bring back google reader <laughs> you know, uh, is it like, come on, guys, this is their like 10 percent, you know, like like somebody actually dedicates There's probably like four people there that are like, what are we going to do for April Fool's next year at this point? Right. Uh, who knows? But uh, it's showing a little bit. Whoop, whoop. Yeah, not that one. There we go. Uh, so like <laughs> so like she's searching for campfire and there's a smell button by it and it's showing a diagram of the computer and the smell coming off and he's leaning towards his computer and it smells like a fish (laughs) (laughs) it's and they're so serious and earnest when they when they talk about things like this um the best one i i still think the best one i know it upset wrestle fan um when i was talking to him last night youtube uh is finally shutting down the contest is over Thank you for your submissions. Did you see this, Storm? No, I didn't actually. But I'm looking at an article about it right now. So if you if you log on YouTube, if you're on your back end, you're looking at your video files, you get a little banner across the top like you usually get with a little message, hey, try this out. Hey, you need to monetize your stuff, you know, or whatever. Um, they would... And it said, uh, uh, congratulations on your and however videos you've uploaded entries. Uh, we'll let you know if you won. And then all of your icon, all your videos had the uh, had a nominated icon by them, like right where the monetize and the other uh, you know, like the Creative Commons icons are and all those things. Um, and there's this like amazing video where like we started YouTube, whatever it was. And now we're glad, you know, to, to, to do the world's most amazing contest. And now it's over, and we're going to comb through all these videos. And I think they pulled in some, like, celebrity rappers or something to start viewing all the videos with them. We'll let you know who wins in 2024 when we're done <laughs> going through the videos. So, um, and I thought that was kind of a novel one. It, it, was, it was pretty fun. that We're all, like, under this ruse, and it was a contest. But I don't know. I like, I like April Fool's for that reason. You know, I, people are so tired with it, but... I hate when it caught, I, I saw it coming this year, so it was a little better. And we get to have fun with it too. Like we we just you know blurt out ridiculous stuff on the on the uh, Twitter accounts for these shows, and which I guess isn't too different than what we usually do. But you know, it's kind of funny. It looks like some other Twitter was going to launch a, a site without any vowels. Yeah, uh, yeah. Twitter had that on their blog. Yep. 
so. Netflix super grumpy genres. I uh, didn't get to read through those. Let's see. TV shows where crossed arms mean business. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. And what, movies that are in English but still require subtitles. Let's see. Uh, movies with epic Nicolas Cage melt- meltdowns. Nice. <laughs> among others. What's, so the, um, White, the White House did something, but I'm not really sure. I see Cars is saying in the chat uh, that uh, he almost fell for the Apple iPlay commercial from IGN. People were hoping the death of a uh, reader was a prank. Uh, and it says his, his brother didn't like the YouTube because he loves watching videos. <laughs> SourceFed reported Grumpy Cat died uh, was another one. I, I heard good things about what uh, what uh, SourceFed did yesterday as well. So there you go. Um, uh, one other thing that I think is a, an April Fool's, a long-winded April Fool's prank. Um, and I may be a victim of it right now. Uh, so they started rolling out the winners of the uh, Glass Explorer i don't know contest whatever you want to call it um you know where you said if i had glass and you said how you would use glass and everything like that uh so basically if the if you're selected uh they send you a tweet and 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 you're still going to have to go and pay fifteen hundred dollars for one of the first editions of google glass so okay you know um i got a tweet saturday night about this uh that i had been selected for the explorer program um i don't know what to do about that norm <laughs> wait who's who sent it to you um the actual like them like uh, the, the google glass and i checked it out it's verified it looks like it's for real uh but it's yeah it's the it's the google glass thing hold on and it's only it's fifteen hundred dollars i think chachi, just get the- chachi are you joining me yes hey I he's with us you. he's with us i'm gonna bring him up here uh, we were just talking about how I uh, apparently got accepted into the uh, Google Glass Explorer program. Oh, KMA, <laughs> all right? What? I said KMA. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, then, well, you can completely have it if you'll pay for it. Oh. <laughs> Dude, you got to do it. Put a collection together and, like, start a Kickstarter, do something. I, I was it. thinking about, like, do I do a Kickstarter? Do I just, like, put a donate button on the page? Would, like, like I'm like, I'm like, you know, what if I do a Kickstarter and say, you know, if you donate and help me out with this, uh, I'll completely let you wear it. Yeah, you something. Know? I, Figure I mean, it out. I mean, do just, it. just why not, right? I, I don't know. I might have to. I might have to just, I'll put the donut button up and, 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 and we'll see what happens. Well, here's the thing. How far away are we from this technology on a consumer level? Uh, they said by the end of the year. And how much, is, well, how much, super early adopters. I don't know about the end of the year. I mean, <laughs> I'd be, I'm, I would be severely impressed if that was true. If it so, actually happens. I mean, they haven't even sent the developer uh, versions from last year's uh, Google I.O. where people put down for it. Here's the other thing. You could just, just get it, use it a couple times, and then sell it for triple. Right? This is true. This is true. Or, also, I mean, maybe, the, maybe be, there's a clause you're not allowed to sell it. Also, it'd be a tremendous ra- uh, tax write-off, you know, I, or something. I, I don't know at this yeah, point. Yeah, you could make a lot of money with this. I, I don't know exactly how, <laughs> whether you just straight up turn around and sell it immediately or start using it and create a blog that has – Infinite amount of ads. It'd just on be it. like my days with Google Glass, you know, or, or something like that. Today, I got thrown out of uh, the grocery here, store. Here is the ultimate idea. What's that? What you do is you tell them that in return for you uh, getting their money, that uh, you get to follow Chachi around for a day. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll, I'll Google Hangout the entire day. You are, you are, so, you are, you are part of this equation, Chach, because there's, there's, you know, if we get our hands on this, there's not going to be, you know, you're, you're going to have this a, a good bit probably. Right. Uh, I, I'm, I'm trying to bring up the uh, the, the conversation here because I was, uh, I'm like, what did I say? Because I feel like I said something ridiculous. Actually, I must have. Uh, I think I feel like I put a, a couple different things out there, right? Uh, I want to get the tweet right that I had sent. Yeah. Well, are you sure they didn't approve you and then disapprove you? Because apparently they did that too. They did that to a lot of people. I have not. How do you know you're disapproved then? I have no uh, idea. Because I'm wondering why they approved me. Because I put, uh, if I had glass, I would put it on pro wrestling opponents and stream the match via Hangout. 
<laughs> Guess I'd need two. That would be dangerous. Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> Here, wear this $1,500 thing on your face. Don't break it. Yeah. Um, but uh, you're not making enough tonight to pay me back. <laughs> yes, yeah, for sure. At um, all. Yeah, yeah. It's. Uh, I don't know. I. 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 Part of me is like I got to, but I like I like financially can't. You know, unless I. Yeah. You're gonna get so many followers if you just did like what I just Dean did when she was live casting. Yeah. Just think about how many people are gonna start following me just because you're using the glasses. Because like, how gonna... many people in Pittsburgh are gonna have it for one thing? You know. Yeah. Uh, well, you're you're gonna be global it. now. I mean, you're 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 gonna be in this elite group. How many are they giving away mm-hmm. or le- selling? I should say. Uh, we don't, we don't know group? at this point. I don't think. I, I, I don't... think you got to do it. <laughs> Open a new credit card. That's what I'm like. I can't get a credit card. Are you kidding me? A credit is horrible. I, I am. I am looking into maybe I can expand the loan I took out a few years ago. Uh, they keep hitting me up for for doing that. Uh, you know, and 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 you know, the money I'll make off of Google Ads will make up for it, right? Or get a sponsor. Just find a corporate sponsor that's like, I'll always put your logo on whatever I do. And fifteen hundred dollars to them is nothing. I should talk to the tech council. Yeah, seriously. Go. Just do yeah. There's I think like you could easily get fifteen hundred dollars for this like amazing new technology because people are going to want to be associated. People are going to want to see it themselves. Yeah, I think you could get it. I think you could do it. Like like well, maybe, maybe there could be a demonstration day. I can work out with whoever we talk to. What is it up, Josh? Uh, John pointed out in the chat room that one of the people uh, that were originally selected had tweeted out, "If I had Google Glass, I'd smack a bitch." And at first, as she she had made it into the selection process, so yeah, yeah, th- th- that was the other thing too. Like, how in the world are they doing this? Like, this article came up that most of the list was like celebrities and Twitter, you know, popular Twitter accounts and everything like that. Um, and and it's gone on through the week, and 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 this has come up where it's people like you know saying stuff like this that were actually making fun of it with the hashtag, and, and they said they were in, and now they're going back and and rescinding those from these people. Um, what is this process? And and to have the privilege to spend fifteen hundred dollars to get this, you know, uh, you know, decidedly hopefully awesome thing, you know, um, I don't know. But it could still be a hoax. Is is the other? Is the other, the entire? You don't thing. know if it's true. Do you know if it's real? It's verified. The account's verified. So I I, I can't. Where do I go from there? You know, like that should mean that everything's cool. Well. Maybe you could talk to uh, Christina from uh, the Geek Night. She, she would. Uh, she might have an in to make sure it's verified. Okay. All right. Or All right. Uh, you know, I've got. There's a guy who I know who works for Google. Let me. I can ask. I, he's not connected to this project at all. Of course. But no, I can, no. They're they're doing I it. Could in maybe New York, ask him to find out who you talk to. <laughs> what happens? Why well, they don't have any information? It just says make sure you follow us and we'll DM you. Uh, uh, details uh, later on. So that I, seems so strange, though. That, well, that, it? it does. The whole thing seems strange. The Do whole, they have your email address? The whole. They have my Twitter account, and my Twitter account should have my email address. Uh, I, this just <laughs> flew out the window for me. I don't think it's real. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll say any other thing, man. I'll say any. I'll say any other thing. We'll tweet it out. I'll. Uh, hold on. Hold on. Here, I'll. I'll like, can I re-retweet it? <laughs> No, well, it failed my retweet, unfortunately. Oh, Google uh, shut down the retweet. Uh oh. No, no, no. I'm. It, it's tweet duck. I can't retweet something yet again if I already retweeted it. It's at Project Glass is the account. All right. And and uh, I'll check it out. You check it out. You look into it. Uh, it's followed by uh, Kevin Smith and Tim O'Reilly. So you know. Um, oh, if the fat man wore the Google Glass, I would completely watch it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly right, Chachi. I'm glad you're here because I got something. I got some big news. Uh, this Wait, is hold some... on. What? I, I would like to address something in the chat room first. Okay. It, it, uh, John Edward said that uh, SourceFed reported that Grumpy Cat died. Yes. Uh, that was an April Fool's joke. No, yeah, yeah. We were talking about April Fool's jokes okay. when, we were, when he was telling us that. He uh, he is completely alive and well. That's good to know. Good to know. Now, now, Chachi, you know I like comic books. Yes. And you like comic books too, right? Eh. Eh. I, I won't go out of my way to read a comic book. What if you had a Netflix of comic books? <laughs> well, how much would it cost? <laughs> now this is turning into an ad. No. Um. Well, uh, how about five bucks a month? 
No. No? Listen, uh, chances are I wouldn't use it as much as I use the Netflix that I use now. That's true. That's true. Well, anyways, uh, this is this is something. So there, Marvel's had this Marvel Unlimited for a few years now um, where you can, you sign up. They, they're going for like $10 a month and, and $60 a year, a year respectively. Um and the whole idea was you get this access to, and they kept adding to you know their old catalog of of comics. Um, but so ideally, like most of anything, you should want to find. I, I've I've gone in there and looked for specific things I wanted to read and everything. And it looked pretty pretty comprehensive. I even jumped back in here when I heard this news and said, "Hey, is, do they have that stuff that I'm having trouble with finding uh, in my local library?" Because they don't they don't carry everything. They carry a good bulk here in the Carnegie wonderful Carnegie Library system. They absolutely do not have everything. And I have some really obscure Ultimate Comics t- titles I want to read. Um, so. They, uh, I just found this out on Mac. It's a library. Yeah, I I know. The fact that they have all this stuff is cool enough, right? I'm not going to complain when when they don't. Uh, But this is something I've been waiting for. Marvel Unlimited uh, just released their iPad and iPhone versions. Now, previously, this was only, and this was the big thing that was the stopper for me, because it was only in a, uh, it was, it, it was, the reader was in Flash on a web browser. That was it. That's it. I, I didn't think that was real good for reading. It wasn't worth the money because I, I knew I wouldn't get to it. Just like just like you, Chachi. I would not get to that many comics. Right. Now, having it on my iPad, that just changed the game for me. And for what amounts to about five bucks a month, I am completely down with this idea. <laughs> um, I, I downloaded the app, checked it out. You can they, they always have like a few free issues for you to kind of see how it works and everything. Um and it is, and it's, and the site's broken, and the site's broken. Does it work better than a uh, Redbox Instant? I have not tried Redbox Instant. I, have you? Yes, I have. How'd that go? Um, well, uh, they they have a thing right now where uh, if you if you sign up, you get a free month of streaming mm-hmm. plus uh, like four DVD rentals from the actual Redbox. Yeah, yeah, like it's a weird mashup of Netflix and the Redbox, right? Right. Um, and so I, I downloaded the app for uh, Xbox. Yeah. Um, because I was sitting around, I'd watched, I just watched, uh, I think it was Mighty Ducks 2. Mm-hmm. And Classic. I, I went on and I'm like, well, they're advertising it, let's see what's going on. And I went on, I did a search for a few movies that they didn't have. And then uh, it was like, oh, you looked for this. Would you like to watch this instead? And I, I forget what I what I searched to bring it up, but uh, one of the suggestions was Swordfish. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, why, yes, I would like to watch Swordfish right now. Swordfish is a pretty good movie. Yeah. And I'm like, so you want me to go sign up for this trial and you'll let me watch Swordfish? I'm like... That is a deal, good sir. That is a deal. You talk to your uh, electronic devices and services a lot. I do. I'm just getting used to it for when the robots show up. Oh, yeah. You should check out our story from earlier. Um, but uh, so I signed up. And it was a really quick process. I did it from my phone. Um, and I, I started watching Swordfish. It took 45 seconds for the, uh, the voice and the or the the sound in the movie to be off sync, mm. and then another fifteen minutes uh, for the picture to just stop, and the sound to keep going. Ooh! And now, uh, normally I would chalk this up to like my internet connection being really taxed. Yeah. But I had just watched uh, three episodes of Raising Hope from Netflix. And uh, Mighty Ducks 2 from Xbox Video. So that's <laughs> two different video services I had just used that worked perfectly fine. So I, I, I shut it off. I wasn't, I wasn't able to watch Swordfish, and I was sad. I might have it on DVD I can give you. I think I have a copy on VHS lying around. <laughs> yep. Uh, and, uh, yeah. And so... Uh, uh, when was it? Friday at work. It was it was kind of slow. It was good Friday. No one was there except for uh, the Jewish attorneys, um, which was weird. Uh, but it, I was I was browsing Redbox and uh, everything was exactly the same as Netflix. 
What do you mean? Like as as far as because uh, I didn't really pay attention to it from the the catalog perspective on my Xbox. Yeah. Uh, but browsing the website, the selection m- minus five or six movies on Redbox that aren't on Netflix mm-hmm. that I didn't want to watch anyhow are on uh, Redbox. No, I'm looking through the site, and, and like it feels like oh, I got so much, so many movies are they're available to me. But but really, it's kind of keeps tossing you back and forth between what's on a subscription and what's uh, at the kiosk and what's on available for renting or buying and everything. Uh, like I have like this movie's on, on subscription, but this one's at the kiosk. You know, so mm-hmm. now you have to say okay, I want to watch this movie, and now you have to think okay, where is it? All within one service, you know. Yeah. Like, oh, do I have to leave to watch this one? You know. Um, it's well, e- see, the thing is, uh, if you're not paying attention and you're just searching, yeah. or you're just looking at their catalog, yeah, you don't know where that movie is available until oh. you actually click it and open it. Because I, I was browsing and I'm like, oh, well, that's weird. They have the social network on here. I love that movie. I want to watch it now. And it's like, oh, you can get this from the red box, or you can buy it from us now. Even even looking at it, you know, I, I think Netflix won because they're very simple. I paid one price, <coughs> I got DVDs, and I happen to have streaming, right? Right. Uh, I play for Amazon Prime. Hey, you got two days shipping. Oh, by the way, you got this over here. By the way, you got this over here. It seems like you're get. It seems when when you like, you know, listening to it before and listening to you describe it, it seems too complicated when you say, well. You get Redbox streaming, what we have available, and you get, what, four DVDs you can go to the kiosk and get out? Yeah. Like, right there, I think that's, like, the limit of attention span that anybody cares. Right. You know? Well, for the for the lack of quality, mm-hmm. um, uh, that's the wrong word, uh, for the lack of selection, for the lack of reliability. And they're new. Right, no. But it's not I like don't... you're in a beta. Don't care. <laughs> if this is exactly. Redbox. Exactly. If they want to join the game, it needs to work instantly. You're backed by Verizon. Your network should be pretty, pretty exactly up the par. Um, so, uh, right off the bat, as soon as you say, "Hey, this service is available," mm-hmm. it needs to work, and it needs to have a way to stand out from your main competitor. And I think that's what they're trying to do with the kiosk availability. No, it doesn't work. But it doesn't. No, because I, if I want DVDs, I can pay another, what, five, six bucks from Netflix. Yeah. Yeah. Just like I have, I would have to do from them. And they just come to you. Yeah. So I don't have. Now, now granted, some people are, I think this is, you're, I think what they're going to get more are the people that are already going to the kiosk. I think this is going to be a good deal for them because that's what they're used to. They're trained to do that, much like you and I were trained to go to the video store back in the day. Um, so I don't think you're going to get a lot of you and me's from next Netflix coming over to Redbox unless we really would love, to, unless you really, really wish you could get a DVD now. Right. Like walk out of your house, walk, drive, wherever it is. Uh, yeah, Redboxes are in driving distance more than walking where I think they're like the closest may be a mile away from me, right? Uh, two miles away from me. Um, yeah, you know, and you, I don't think there's too many red boxes up in your neighborhood. None. <laughs> exactly. You know, whereas they're at every grocery store, every CVS, a, you know, down here, they, they can't put those boxes up in your neighborhood. No. Um, but they're, but they are like everywhere otherwise, right? Do you guys know how this would compare to Apple's service? You know, just using iTunes to rent movies. Is that? Well, what's... I think the only difference is, you know, whether you have Apple devices and it's, I think it's more costly to a la carte from Apple in the long run. But you have more recent stuff. Right. So it, it, it's that that it's that, you know, what what part of these services are important for me. I can wait for season three of Walking Dead. Or if I really want it, I battle with it. It's like thirty six bucks for the season on Amazon. I'm like, oh, do I want to drop that? Ah, the season's halfway over. I'll have it by, you know, fall or something to watch it anyways. Or maybe a, maybe somebody I know DVR and I can watch. You know who knows, right? Right. Uh, I, you know me. I like I can wait. You know it's like oh we just went went through season uh, six of Psych. Oh uh, well, seven's going on now. It's like yeah, but Hulu doesn't pick it up. I, I, I can wait. You know I I have plenty. It's I have plenty to watch in the meantime. 
right? Uh, and I'm, you know, but again, that is it from person to person. Are you somebody that says, I need to watch the newest thing? Then you're going to look at Redbox. You're going to look at uh, Amazon uh, uh, purchases or Xbox video or, or, or Redbox. Um, yeah, it, 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 that's the cool part is it's not just, I get cable, so I hope this all fits, you know, it, it, it's massive because it's one size fits all for all of us. You know, at least that's what I'm trying to do so they have our money, right? But then you're paying for all the stuff everybody else watches that you don't. Um, How much does it cost to get a movie out of the kiosk? I think a dollar, dollar, dollar fifty now. Okay. Because there, there's some of them on there that you can rent. Yeah. And watch instantly, but that's like four bucks. Wait, so you have a subscription, but then there's some you can rent on top of that? Yeah, like uh, stuff that you'd be able to get at a kiosk or stuff that they don't have license, like complete license to stream. So it sounds like they are, they're trying to be completely the kiosk plus your Amazon uh, uh, instant video purchases slash iTunes. Well, yeah, that's, what I said about, the that's what I said about the social network. Yeah. It was one of those where uh, you're like, oh, I really want to watch that. And they're like, well, you can't, uh, you can't stream it or you can't. Uh, just watch it with your account mm. but if you want you can buy it yeah or, yeah. or uh, like smaller than that it says uh or rent it it's almost <laughs> like they sucked you in as a loss leader with the rental like or with yeah. the subscription and then they're just adding on all this like netflix doesn't still try to sell me crap right i pay netflix and they don't bother me except hey here's something cool you could watch no you don't have to give us more money oh hey here's a new series that nobody else is going to get for uh, the dvd for house of cards is going to finally come out in june yeah you know or or hey we noticed that you stopped watching the show in the middle of it is the quality okay yeah oh <laughs> yeah oh yeah they, uh, oh did you hey when'd you send this we want to make sure our mail is working you yeah. know, uh, the, the the quality assurance stuff, and it wasn't never too annoying. Netflix always did the right thing when it comes it comes to that kind of stuff. Yeah, and in the uh, in the the small chance that they screw up, then you get an apology email. <laughs> All right, so I think what we've got from this conversation, yes, I should get Google Glass uh, so I can sub- not subscribe to Redbox, but subscribe to Marvel Unlimited to read on them. Yes. Okay. Right. Since we kind of jumped all over the place, I think I'm that sorry. all came together nicely, uh, right well, there. I, I, it was going to be my uh, my BS thing of the week. Okay, <laughs> um, but I missed that segment, so well, I, a, I brought it up. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, wait, wait, wait. So you, Oh yeah, your awesome thing is your BS thing. That's right. You do the yeah. opposites. Um, well, I, I do. It depends on the week. Mm-hmm. I was really, I was really hung up about this red box thing. Plus, it took me ten minutes to find out where to cancel it. <laughs> like it, it was so hidden deep in in the account that I, I was seriously searching for a while. I, I got I got one thing I got the only thing I gotta say that Verizon's logo is on the service. Yeah. So it should be working. No, 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 <laughs> no. It okay. Uh, I I still say about Verizon um, when you deal with their sales and their services in regard to what I receive in services, horrible. Gotcha. Horrible, horrible fucking effing people. Um, <laughs> this is how strongly I feel about them. Hey, tech support you, and technology, you, they are fantastic. Well, you don't let me talk about Sony on here for that reason. Exactly. Exactly. So, exactly. You know. so, so the fact that you know they're providing the service, if you have a technical problem, I bet you call that tech support and they're going to be great. <laughs> but you try to cancel or add to the service, somehow you're going to end up with Showtime, and you have Comcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's how bad it is. Um, anyways, with that. <laughs> um, I called Verizon and ended up with Showtime. <laughs> I'm Comcast. <laughs> That's how bad their customer service is. Anyways, Norm Mulesman. Wait, hold on. Oh, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> uh, Speaking of customer service, oh, okay. Uh, there, there's a story I have to tell. Okay, so last week we talked about uh, the BlackBerry 10 and how only 2% of the stores sold out. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of my attorneys bought the BlackBerry Z10. Oh, oh yeah, you mentioned this. Um, he and, and for some reason, these people don't stop and think that they should probably ask us. Yeah. Before they go out and uh, buy stuff. Yeah. Well, he didn't. And so he called and he spent like $500 on this thing or however much it costs because he wasn't up on his contract. 
and he calls us. He's like, hey, I just bought this awesome new BlackBerry, his words. He's like, can you help me put my email on it? And I'm like, all right, I'll give it a shot. And so I went through, assuming that the operating system and everything was the same and that it would work with our server. You, you, you haven't been well, keeping up on BlackBerry, have you? <laughs> no, it's BlackBerry. Okay. They're dying soon. Okay. Um, but uh, so I went through, went to the same places, didn't work. Um, and then I finally decided to call uh, the lady that normally orders our, our devices for us. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, hey, I have this guy on the phone. He uh, he he wants to hook up his uh, his BlackBerry. And she's like, oh, did he go and get the new one? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> she she starts laughing. She's like, yeah. Uh, tell him he's S O L. Once again, her words. Well, apparently, uh, the new BlackBerry doesn't work on the old black on the old Bez server. <laughs> So the whole reason people want the BlackBerry, it will because of the uh, because of the OS changes. Yeah, if you want to support BlackBerry, you have to upgrade your server. Yeah, from a business perspective, forget if that. You, if you have twenty five hundred employees, and a thousand of them are on BlackBerry, that's fine. Mm-hmm. However, if 999 of those people using BlackBerry are on an old OS, uh, business-wise, you're not upgrading that server. Nope. Because the old BlackBerry doesn't work on the new server. So so a company like this really, really went ahead and, um, and, and, and created a new barrier for people to continue or, or using their service. Yes. Because that's exactly what they needed right now. I know. That's why I said they're going to die soon. They got to There's no way this works. There's no in, way. In, in the short they, time it's been out, we've received two calls. Okay. Of people that went out and bought it. Uh, at the end of those calls, we had two very angry shareholders. <laughs> who are now using iPhones. Okay. <laughs> not not kidding. That sounds like my Vista uh, uh, resolution. Uh, we have we have uh, two very angry shareholders who begrudgingly said, "Screw you, BlackBerry! I'm getting an iPhone." And rightfully so. Let's right. be honest. Rightfully so. Right. Uh, and I don't see any other reason you anything they're bringing to the table that's that, that's real fantastic. Right. So, so I, I just thought it was funny that it was going to cost us all that money to upgrade to the new BlackBerry, yeah, uh, the new Best server, and completely screw everyone else. Yeah. And uh, uh, my boss, the chief, he's the COO, said no. <laughs> so I, I added something, Chachi, since I since I had to remove something back here. Uh, I, our good buddy Chilla, who joined us last week, and he gave me this a, a while ago when he was cleaning out his closet. I don't think this works, but uh, I don't know. Does anybody remember something like this back in the day? Is, is that the HP? No, this is the, well, close. It's the Compact iPac uh, pocket PC. So apparently it's before uh, HP. Uh, some of these like backpack things that came with it. <laughs> So of course, yeah. I keep forgetting they continue to use the compact logo sometimes. Yeah. Um, so yeah, like I have. Well, these are all compacts that that new mess of computers I got right. Uh, but they all like I go to HP's website because they're that new because they're paying for it, so they're they're a bit newer. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I figured this would go in the you know like right next to the uh, rest of the aging technology and the QCAD and the NES and the. Uh, uh, Transformer um, and everything like that. Uh, I, I thought it was appropriate, so I, I thought you'd appreciate that. Um, oh yeah, check it out the next time I'm in the studio. All right. So, um, so Norm, he's at itwixy.com. He's doing fun things over there, and right. uh, I understand you might have something else coming up. Yeah, I'll I'll leave my rumor. Uh, I don't know <laughs> how big of news it is to the awesome cast audience but i'm working on a word camp with someone Ooh. so um i don't have any other information other than talking about it what's a word camp <laughs> well, for the people uh, that know, don't I'm know wordpress like okay. 
total geek. So uh, it's a it's a conference all about WordPress. So from a developer perspective to just a blogger perspective. Um, and there's work camps all over the country, and we're working on trying to get one in Pittsburgh. So. And this is much of the same vein of how uh, PodCamp rolls? Pretty much. Uh, different structure to the day, not as... Um, not as many sessions uh, and more conferency. I think, uh, in terms of, but who knows? I think it's gonna. I, I would. I would venture to say at this early stage that it's gonna be more like um, web design day. Uh, okay. But more, you know, but with with some more stuff going on. So. Um, it looks a bigger. little bit more focused, but less uh, and, le- and less all over the place. Where PodCamp has many many different topics this would be very very focused on on wordpress development so just or looking, blogging just looking here i'm seeing uh miami seoul uh nashville uh canton west wait north canton something something I don't, I don't know where that is uh so yeah there's a bunch all around i know i'm getting emails from i think columbus uh I, i've been like looking at hopefully like you know have a opening to check that out but that's great to see uh, it, it might be coming here then so, yeah, yeah. I, I, I've been getting a lot of people actually asking me uh, 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 for about WordCamp. I'm sorry, WordCamp, what WordPress, and uh, using that, and some people that want to get into helping like design develop, you know, for themselves and others. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm definitely going to direct them this uh, as uh, you start leaking more information. Yeah, Mr. Hulesman. So, so yeah, I'll, let, I'll definitely keep you guys posted, and um, uh, you know, maybe maybe we can tie it into PodCamp this year. It just mm-hmm. kind of depends on logistics. So. Makes sense. Makes oh. sense. So, and of course, check him out. He's got uh, helps out over at the uh, great itwixie.com. If you're a uh, tween girl, uh, thank you for listening to this podcast. I'm sorry <laughs> about my language. Uh, and also check out itwixie.com. So, there you go. Uh, Chachi, joining us late. Thank you. That's a nice haircut. Uh, you thought I was kidding. I was, not, <laughs> I was very I, aware you're not kidding. Uh, yeah, uh, I. I I wait so long between haircuts sometimes that when I finally sit down to get my haircut, it is a chore. Look at me, man. Once a year. Once a year, yeah. I'm about due, right? Right. So, so yeah, I uh, shave and start over. I hit the reset button on it, you know? Yeah, I don't shave my head. Not shave, but I got pretty pretty, pretty down there last time. So, uh, yeah, he's at insertcoin to begin.com. Talking all your geeky news, doing Let's Play right after this here. Yeah. Of course. Unsung, we're filming tomorrow. Are we? Yeah, I think I think we are. are we, yeah, he has Google thing? glasses to film with. Yeah. Is that, <laughs> is that a thing that we're doing? I think that's a thing we're doing. I think we talked about that, right? All right, then All I right. should probably shave we're after gonna, this. We're going to green screen again. Are uh, we? Yeah, yeah, I think we're going to do that. I, I, it turned out well. Uh, I don't feel like going anywhere in the cold. So we have a green screen so we can put you anywhere. Gotcha. Hmm. hmm. We'll just get a nice vista of, you know, Pittsburgh or something and... There you go. Um, or we can put you in Delaware. Of course, uh, hey, we're here live. Well, go to Delaware. Live every Tuesday night, 7 p.m., live.sorgatronmedia.com. Uh, talk tech with us. Also go to awesomecast.com. Contact at awesomecast.com to contact us. We're also on Twitter at awesomecast, on the Facebook, on Google Plus as well. Uh, we uh, pimp out some stories. Ah, that's keep dropping these uh we uh throw out some stories uh throughout the week of what we're looking at so you can comment on those and uh, kind of see where we're going where we're thinking we're going to talk about this week uh in awesome cast uh and, and you can contribute things what do you think we should be talking about uh did we do we miss something uh that, that should be brought up let us know uh and uh and, and there you go um of course we're on itunes blip tv on the roku box on the blip tv app youtube and stitcher as well um so thanks norm and chachi for joining me this week uh thank you to our awesome chat room joining us all night hop in there and uh, uh you've been our awesome audience have an awesome week Hey, are you enjoying this show here on the Sorgatron Media Network, uh, straight from Pittsburgh, PA? 
Did you know there's a bunch of other videos coming from Pittsburgh and there's one source where you can find everything Pittsburgh based so you can represent the Steel City and see people who do represent the Steel City. Go to our friends over at PittsburghOnVideo.org, a big aggregator of these, this great stuff coming from the Steel City on video to you wherever you are around the world. That's PittsburghOnVideo.org. Go check it out.